It's a far away Nisha. How far I've fallen. I used to have an office, <laughs> used to have staff, <laughs> professional grade equipment, and now I'm talking about conspiracy theories in my bedroom. <laughs> As is the life of a YouTuber. <laughs> Fuck you, COVID-19. The moon landing hoax, or the idea that NASA did not put man on the moon in 1969 is one of the most pervasive conspiracy theories ever coined. Which is kind of stupid when you think about it, because virtually everything moon landing conspiracy theorists like to point to as evidence that man absolutely did not walk on the face of the moon all those years ago can be debunked by the official photos NASA released to the public about 50 years ago. Alright, so conspiracy theories are just ridiculous anyway. This one especially, yeah. Do you know who it was coined by? Uh, the moon landing conspiracy theory, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I did write an article for Today I Found Out, which you can find linked below, because they've got way better production values than us, especially right now, <laughs> um, where I researched it. But a couple of like key facts I remember about it is that the moon landing conspiracy theory was started by exactly one man, uh, whose name you can find here, because I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I do remember a specific fact about him, and that is that he had absolutely no background in rocket science and he had no affiliation with NASA, except for the fact he wrote technical manuals for a company tangentially related to them. And according to him, he saw a document in the 1950s that said the odds of man landing on the moon were about 0.01, and then 15, 20 years later, they were able to do it without incident. And according to him, that didn't sit right with him. And that's it. Also as well, that original document he said that he saw has never emerged anywhere. He's never been able to provide, or he was never able to provide proof that it existed because he died. And there are a couple of amazing little factoids included in the first edition of the book he wrote alleging that the moon landing was a hoax, um, which I'm going to share here because I wrote that article the day I found out video is based on and I had to buy that fucking book. <laughs> so I'm gonna get my money's worth out of it. Um, <laughs> one of which is that um, before the moon landing they took all of the NASA astronauts to a like to Las Vegas where they partied and got drunk and one of them got into a fist fight with a stripper or over a stripper sorry the other uh, and another one is that um, they filmed the moon landing on a sound stage in Area 51 because it's not a conspiracy theory unless it involves Area 51 in some capacity and they filmed it with a five second delay according to him anyway he said that they filmed it with a five second delay meaning that if one of the astronauts would have fallen over or a light would have like, you know, been nudged, or a moth flew onto set, and they would have had five seconds to hide it um, in footage that was going to be analyzed by the entire world for the rest of human history. And then the other one that I like is, uh, because it's one of those things conspiracy theories like to do to make, them sound, make themselves sound more credible, and it is add additional little details. And that is that before the NASA astronauts climbed into their fake spacesuits and walked out onto that Area 51 soundstage, they ate cheese sandwiches. Uh, so this guy apparently had so much inside knowledge about these fake moon landings that he knew what the <laughs> catering was, but was never able to provide any proof. And over the years, um, he released multiple editions of that book, which um, kept changing the theory or how things went down and removed things entirely or changed um, the story, uh, which contrasts um, slightly with NASA, whose official story has never changed, ever. Weird that, isn't it? We can bring it back now, though, to the actual moon landings themselves and how photos released by NASA basically debunk every single thing people hold up as evidence they didn't happen. So what do you have for an example? Uh, well, one of the most famous examples that um, conspiracy theorists like to point to as evidence the moon landings didn't happen is something known as the Sea Rock, um, which you can see behind me right now. Actually, I don't know. If, can we do that? Can we do that with this new green screen? So I think we could just put it on the screen, uh... but I don't think because we can't chroma key anything <laughs> I, if I hold my hand up it'll be behind it so can we do that um, we didn't think this through did we we need images <laughs> this yeah we picked an article that kind of relies on us showing the audience at home images and we don't have a green screen anymore so let's just try and put it in this corner here and I won't move in that direction um, here the <laughs> sea rock and conspiracy theorists say that's proof that this rock is a prop and as such it is being filmed on a sound stage because apparently a thing they do when they're making films is they mark props for example, like with letters or numbers like C, and that tells you where the rock's going to go. And you can see why someone who is an idiot would look at that and go, well, that definitely didn't happen. 
That's a prop rock right there. Why is there a C on that rock? But the thing is that experts have pointed out that it's probably just a hair, which conspiracy theorists will say, oh, that's a very likely story. Where did this hair come from? The answer to which is, uh, probably one of the thousands of publications that reprinted the photos because if you go track down the original photo that NASA put out um, which is freely available online in frankly astonishing quality given that it was taken over 50 years ago on the fucking moon you can zoom right in on that rock and see that there is no seat on it um, meaning that it was probably when they sent out the negatives and newspapers got them and reprinted them there was probably just, as mentioned, a hair or an eyelash or something that got into it. And then that's been, and obviously that image was then reprinted and reprinted itself, which leads to this so-called sea rock. But if you go track down the original image, it's like, well, there's no sea there. Which, because they say, oh, well, they must have edited that photo. So, so they edited the original they released, but not the ones that the <laughs> news put out. So what are the other photos that can debunk this conspiracy theory? One other thing conspiracy theories like to point to is this image right here of Buzz Aldrin looking like a fucking baller on the surface of the moon. Anisha, I believe you have that photo in front of you right now, yes? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Uh, would you say that that photo is very well lit? Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty dramatic. Yeah, would you say it's suspiciously well lit? Not really, I mean, it just looks a bit edited. Yeah, and here's the thing, because what conspiracy theories like to say is, well, that image is way too good. It's too perfect, is what they say. It looks like there is a spotlight on Buzz Aldrin. So it looks like they put a spotlight on him to take this photo. Which means conspiracy theorists are so fucking stupid they think that NASA brought a spotlight in to light the person they were taking this fake photo of. And again, um, that is something that was added after the fact by newspapers who upped the contrast on the shot so that it looked better for newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> and that photo was obviously taken and then widely disseminated across the world and then people take the edited version and share that as if it were the original. However, if you go to mm -hmm. the original image released by NASA, you can see it's a lot more washed out. It's almost like someone took the photo and edited it to look better for a newspaper. Yeah. Which <laughs> most people do with like photos for like magazines, yeah. articles, anything. You just, all photos are pretty much edited these days. Even these videos, as bad as they look, are edited to like, you know, try to fix the light and stuff like that, which is really bad now because it's starting to get a bit dark outside and there's one light on me. So I'm like a weird oh, no. shadow man. Like, it looks like I've been. Because <laughs> throughout the video, people are going to see my shadow grow longer. It looks like I've been here screaming about conspiracy theories for so long. It got dark. I just love stuff like this because conspiracy theorists, they simultaneously think that NASA was smart enough to pull this off full the entire world media, but not them. Because they made the mistake of bringing a fucking spotlight in. I'm going to guess you've got a final big example. Uh, yes, I do. And one of the most famous things conspiracy theorists like to point to is like, this is proof. This is undeniable. This is cast iron. The smoking gun of this conspiracy that this is fake. The moon landing did not happen. And it is, if you go look at the famous iconic shot of the flag on the moon, you can see that the flag is wrinkled, almost as if it is waving in a non-existent breeze. And again, this shows how stupid conspiracy theorists are. They think that NASA was so fucking full of themselves that they put a wind machine on their soundstage. <laughs> And then there's the video footage when they plant the flag in the moon. You can see how the flag waves as if in a breeze. And people might be looking at that and go, well, there's no atmosphere on the moon. How is the flag staying up and why is it waving around? That's because it's not just a flag on a pole. Like the flagpole was like this and it had a bit sticking out that the flag was hung on. And the reason the flag waves is because the fucking flagpole moves and there's no air resistance so the flag waves backwards and forwards. And although this is the most iconic shot of the flag being planted in the moon, it's not really common knowledge that there were actually two photos taken of that moment a few seconds apart. And if you put those photos back to back, you can see that the astronaut moves, but the flag does not. Showing that there is no breaks. <laughs> the flag does not move. Because it, there is no atmosphere, there is no wind. But again, I love this conspiracy because it means that NASA was smart enough to fool the entire world, but brought a spotlight and a wind machine. <laughs> <laughs> and the only people it did not fool were people on fucking YouTube. God, I'd love to be that full of myself. 
So far away, Nisha, throughout the recording process of this video, um, the sun outside has started to set and um, there is I can oh, no. see a very distinct shadow being cast behind me. And we talked today about you know, editing images and stuff like that. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I know. I, did you say that shadow is very difficult to um, key out or get rid of? It can be, yeah. Because I remember in my final year of uni, the project that I was doing, I had to film outside and I had yes. to do it on a day where there was like hardly any shadows like it was like an overcast day mm -hmm. because with shadows it just made it like 10 times harder to edit yeah so um, I, yeah I'm interested to see how this is gonna go and the way we normally get rid of these if folks at home are wondering is we'll have two lights we normally have two spotlights facing at me at the same time and that largely eradicates the shadow uh, but I could only bring one of the lights home so there's one light shining away from this direction casting a shadow here and the annoying thing is if I go across my bedroom, so we're recording here, and I turn my bedroom light on, uh, my bedroom light is pathetic, and it's only on this side. <laughs> so there's no real way to get... Uh, I, wait, I can, we can try it. If we do some live stuff here, I'll try and move this light. Uh, right, here's the light we use, folks at home. Here it is. Look, I'll move it. I can move it to the other side. Oh, God. Let's, let's try some live... Um, uh, uh, fixing. Well, now I've still got a shadow here. Would it be better if I stood completely against the wall? Would that help? Does this help me? Is it, I hope like when you're editing this one, we can like maybe put a test image behind me or something so we can try this out. But <laughs> I, I guess I'm now just going to stand against the wall like I'm being fucking interrogated or something. <laughs> we just have to have it where the images come in front of you instead of behind you. So yeah. by the end of the video, we can't see you anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's just that. <laughs> As if it wasn't depressing enough recording these videos on my own. So often talk about like, <laughs> after every recording session, I have a blinding headache because I'm stood with like these bright lights in my face for like three or four hours. And then I come home and just lie down because my eyes hurt, I can't play games, I can't watch TV, I can't go on my laptops. So I just lie down and stare at the ceiling. <laughs> oh, no. Now I have to stand against a concrete wall without moving. <laughs> just stand perfectly still. Don't move, don't have fun. Just just, just stand there and act like, oh. <laughs> the, the things I do for content, eh, folks at home. I hope, people, I hope though people are still enjoying it.